We talk a lot about how people are becoming more and more zombie-like in America, and sometimes we use the term the zombification of America. Now, recently in Miami, we caught an actual zombie feasting on the face of another man. Now, this is a true story. Uh, this is a, uh, what's called the Causeway Cannibal. I call him a zombie because uh, here's the thing. He, he was not only uh, feeding on the face of another homeless man there under, the, under this bridge, and police came up on him and decided, you know, this, this is something they should intervene in, which justifiable. So they shot the zombie once, and he didn't stop eating the guy's face when he got shot. So they had to shoot him multiple times. Now, this is sort of one of the red flags. How you know you've met a zombie is when you shoot him and they keep eating the other guy. Probably a zombie. So, so the cops kept shooting the guy. Um, uh, you know, it, it's insane. But then they blame the bath salts. Now, bath salts is a street name for a whole class of so-called designer drugs. They're not actually bath salts. Bath salts are perfectly safe. It turns out these designer drugs, if you inject them, they can, of course, be extremely toxic. But here's the, here's the thing that they don't tell you. The active chemical in this specific designer drug is really the same as the chemical that's found in things like chocolate. But when you eat chocolate, it goes through digestion, and there are inhibitors of that chemical that prevent it from taking over your brain. But this designer street drug was specifically formulated with not only a high concentration of that chemical, but also with uh, inhibitors to make sure that the drug wouldn't be broken down so it could be delivered right into your brain with very high concentrations. And then, well, that makes you go crazy. But of course, you gotta also wonder, what's the effect of all the fluoride, all the vaccines, all the television programming, all the radiation from cell phones and other broadcasters, other electronic communications and electromagnetic pollution. What is the impact of all of that? It's definitely having an impact on the zombification of America. But from this uh, story, I, I wrote a story about the zombification. I was talking about the, the zombie apocalypse actually begins in America. And uh, there's a little bit of, a, of zombiness in the culture now. There's a, there's a company named Hornady that's selling zombie max ammo. Oh, yes, there's ammunition for actually fighting zombies. And they're, they're quite serious about that. You can buy uh, zombie targets. And then I talk about some of the signs of the zombification of America. Let's go over some of these. There are more and more people who walk right into cars and trucks while they're texting. Yeah, they get run over and sometimes killed. People are sleep driving at night. They suddenly awaken and find themselves in their cars in the middle of town, and they have no idea how they got there. Sometimes they even have their clothes on. The complete lack of intelligent questioning about the events of 9-11. Isn't this not another sign of the zombification of America? The acceleration of flu shot propaganda, the rise of a new generation of neurologically damaged, vaccine-damaged children, yet another sign of zombification, the use of aspartame, which, of course, New York City wants to keep legal in unlimited quantities. How about this? What about the guy that was busted in Thailand for having six roasted fetuses in his luggage? So now we've got people seriously eating baby fetuses wrapped in gold foil. <laughs> I don't know, that, that's getting pretty strange. Now, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control has even issued a warning about the coming zombie apocalypse. I'm not making this up. This part is not satire. The CDC, on their website, says that zombies could take over entire countries, roaming the city streets, eating anything living that got in their way, and the CDC is going to come to your rescue. They say the CDC would provide technical assistance to city states to dealing with a zombie infestation. Oh, yeah. The assistance might include consultation, lab testing, analysis, patient management, which you gotta wonder, how do you manage zombies? I don't know. And a tracking of contacts and infection control, including isolation and quarantine. And probably, probably using some of those 450 million rounds of uh, ammo that the Department of Homeland Security bought. Maybe that's zombie ammo. That's the plan. Oh man, sometimes I gotta laugh because it, the whole thing gets too crazy. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three of this news bulletin or report for today, uh, June 1st, 2012. The headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Okay, so I saw this um, yesterday and I just shook my head. I'm like, you know, are you kidding me? Are they just putting these stories out there to imprint the masses, to you know, let them know this is coming and to kind of promote it? Or uh, is this just really escalating? Authorities, Maryland man admits eating heart of victim, 21-year-old college student accused of killing a housemate, told police he ate the victim's heart and part of his brain after he died. 
So um, it says here, hid this individual hid the head and hands of the dead man in his family's basement laundry room in the suburb of Baltimore. And it goes on and it says, that, so this individual who they say was from Kenya studied electrical engineering and was also in the ROTC. So it's here, the Baltimore cannibal has left large online footprint. That's your digital DNA. Kind of interesting too, he said he was fascinated with the military and uh, they found a treasure trove of writings, images, audio recordings, and videos on the internet. Of some of the things uh, he talked about was the feelings of oppression and the end times. So they're actually, this whole article is really about this, about this digital footprint, right? Every person living in our computerized society produces what is called a digital exhaust. <laughs> the random pieces of information generated each day by our online searches, our credit and debit card purchases, the websites we read, and the information about ourselves that reveal to social media like Facebook. So, but it's all about privacy because don't worry, they care about your privacy and uh, nothing's being tracked. And this is, uh, of course, what, by Google. And Google, uh, Eric Schmidt, he was actually at the Bilderberg meeting today. I noticed one of the names, too, was uh, Charlie Rose, which is interesting because he always has, like, some mover, wannabe mover shake, movers and shakers on his show. But, uh, yeah, they had Eric Schmidt at the Bilderberg meeting. And it says here a sinister truth about Google spies, street view cars, stole information from British households, and uh, executives covered it up for years. It says here emails, text, photos, and documents taken from Wi-Fi networks as cars photograph British roads. Oh, but here we go. I'll wrap it up with this. Engineer who designed the software said a privacy lawyer should be consulted. So, yeah, that's your digital exhaust. Then we have this. Remember the um, the one down in Miami? The, ate the face, the cannibal, or a zombie, yeah. It says here, mother of Miami cannibal says son was drugged before alleged attack. And you go down the comment boards and you can go ahead and check them out and see what the zombies are saying. They're just like, oh, that's, you know, oh, you're stupid mother. You know, uh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Just covering up for your son. They don't see what's happening here. You know, it's just, it's just insane, dude. You know, the only thing that they can do is criticize this guy for taking drugs, you know. Um, and it's just, I found kind of interesting, too, uh, that this individual... Kind of looked eerily similar similar to this guy, right? Isn't that kind of weird? So I'm going to move on here. Remember this story? American cage fighter rips out, uh, still beating hard of training partner after fearing he was possessed by the devil after taking hallucinogenic mushrooms. So uh, It says here, investigators stunned by child dismemberment. Texas women accused of killing infant son and eating a uh, child's brain. This was actually from 2009. Just thought I'd include it in this report. Another state reports uncontrolled rise in prescription drug abuse. It says here it represented a 23% increase from the previous year in 2011. Then we have Britain's binge drinking reaches crisis levels. Talking about how girls are slumped in wheelchairs looking barely conscious. Their blonde heads lolling above the plastic vomit bag tied like bibs around their necks. So go in there and check it out. Next up I have disoriented passengers subdued on flight in Miami. And um, it does make you wonder when you use the word disoriented in uh, parentheses what that really indicates. He could have had a diabetic attack. It could have been some kind of Wi-Fi frequencies. Because you know them airports, man, they have a lot of Wi-Fi going uh, smog and stuff like that. And he could just be affected. Who knows, right? Because they were taxing. But it says here that the Canadian was arrested and faced federal charges of interfering with a flight crew. So and be careful when you're going on planes, man. Be careful going through those airports, you know. TSA figures if passengers are confused, so are terrorists. So this, this, so that's why this disoriented passenger who is confused uh, is facing federal charges. It says here that if you are confused, you could be a terrorist. It says here TSA Viper team spotted at Detroit Music Festival. And it went on and basically said that uh, just recently uh, the TSA was expanding uh, to all modes of transportation, including subways, trains, buses, and even open road. That's right, in Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee Highway's Georgia Amtrak station. And it says here, oh yeah, that's right, accidentally screening passengers who simply wanted to leave the station and the Florida Greyhound stations. You can now add this to the list of the following terrorist-rich environment, Detroit's Electronic Music Festival. So, so this individual who is a music musician said that he... Stumbled upon a group of five men who looked like police officers, but one of them was wearing a bulletproof vest with large letters TSA. Upon closer inspection, all the men were DHS, Department of Homeland Security, employees, 
and at least two were armed law enforcement officers. Springs police use new equipment tactics to protect themselves, says all police officers getting SWAT training. So you remember this article, not really an article, but it was just really everybody kind of knew about it. Uh, December 6, 2011, why is the federal government militarizing our police departments? It says here is Pentagon's giving $500 million of military equipment to police departments. And that was just in 2011 alone. That doesn't take into account the federal grants given to them by Homeland Security to buy even more. So all this crazy stuff such as military robots, drones, M16s, helicopters, armed vehicles, that's right, tanks down in Florida, grenade launchers uh, starting to pile up. And these we weapons are going straight to American police forces to be used against U.S. citizens. So I don't, I'm not sure if you remember me re recently just reporting in the same report about how the police were getting more equipment than they actually needed. It was all to fight crime, uh, you know, terrorism and drugs, and the, you know, the drugs and crime level is down. And then the same with the military. They have more equipment than they actually need. They're saying, okay, we have enough. And this uh, 1033 was passed in 1997 to help law enforcement fight terrorism and drugs despite a 40-year low in violent crime. So you can see where this is going, right? You have to be a zombie to not understand where this is going. It's going to be used for people that aren't zombies that realize what's going on. So part of the stimulus program, too, that's right, the stimulus program to, re to boost the economy, right? Create jobs, you know. Uh, one of them was installing surveillance cameras and traffic cameras. That's right. So it says in an effort to protect the northern border, federal authorities are installing cameras on utility poles to read license plates. So they try to lighten it up by saying... Uh, that they're the same cameras that are put up in major cities across the state. So why don't you just take it? Why don't you just accept it? But some of these cameras could be intrusive to the daily lives of residents. This raises privacy concerns. Take it to the courts, right? Missouri and other court rules red light cameras are unconstitutional. No fly list maintained by FBI includes double the U.S. citizens since 2009. It's funny because they use this guy, uh, FBI asset. Uh, as an example for the no-fly list because he was on it and he got bass, right? So it's real good, real real uh, effective. National Guard magazine covers stories specifying Americans as greatest terror threat. So the PDF file is included in here. You can go check it out. It says here it's meant to desensitize Guard members, uh, readers, to the idea of pursuing and capturing Americans on American soil. So in search of the hidden threat, it says here the mission to prevent terrorism on U.S. soil starts with Al-Qaeda, but it doesn't end there. Hmm. Homegrown terrorists, hostile nations, and lone radicals, i.e. lone wolves, present perils too. But one thing's clear. The hunt can never stop. It basically goes on. It scares people about anthrax attacks and stuff like it. Basically stuff that the government's going to actually create, right? The false flag terrorist attacks. They're going to create the biological attacks and quarantine people. And it goes on there and it says about Al-Qaeda and Muslims and stuff like that. But it basically ties it in by saying, what? Over the past two years, we've seen a sharp escalation in homegrown terrorist plots. Which have all been what? FBI, intelligence agencies, coordinated, and usually black Africans or Middle Easterns. Well, now they're showing this picture saying, ooh, he could be white and he could be Muslim. Well, most likely the terrorists that they're looking for are going to be Christians and they're going to be white and they're going to be for restoring a constitutional government, I guess. I'm not saying I agree with that, but it, that's what it is. The new breeding ground it says here that they note the internet is an efficient way for terrorists to raise money. In 2011, the Rand Corporation analyst uh, said here that the average homegrown terrorist recruits 27-year-olds and fluent in computer and internet use. Hmm. And they use things like blogs and web pages. Hmm. GGN. Younger recruits are particularly vulnerable to internet videos. And uh-oh, officials have noted that YouTube have enabled streamlining of planning and phases of terrorist operations. So the conclusion here is is that they can't just come out and flat out tell the flipping truth to these guys that you're going to be taking on American citizens, mostly people who are disgruntled with the government for going rogue and because they lost their fucking jobs, right? And what the Federal Reserve's doing. No, they can't tell them that because they might actually start to think, hmm, well maybe I maybe this isn't good. You know, I have a lot of family members that are feeling this way too. No, you gotta, they got to scare these people, these guard soldiers, and tell them that they're going to be brown people and Muslims. Or they could be white Muslims. You never know. 
but don't racially profile. You have to be tolerant for diversity. So we have a pastor sentenced to two years in prison for teaching that parents should spank their children, while a Canadian teacher is suspended for giving zeros. And even mass killers for false flag terrorist attacks must be treated fairly, as they're going to give him friends in his prison cell. Thank you.